For our daily cancellation today, we take into consideration a recent viral video from a woman who insists that although she's morbidly obese, you must still find her physically attractive. You're not entitled to your own opinions or preferences. You must fall madly in love with her. This is not a suggestion, but rather a requirement, as she clearly explains. Listen. Hey, bestie. <laughs> You're wrong. I think it's time for another adult pre-K lesson. What do you think? All right, turn your listening ears on. Zoop, catch a bubble in your mouth. <gasps> Good job. Okay, here's the thing. Having a preference is something like, I'm looking for a partner who likes kayaking or wakes up early in the morning or loves pizza. <laughs> But when your preferences exclude an entire group of marginalized people, that's problematic. Okay, that's not nice. That's not a preference. If you lump all fat people in one group together as though they are not very different individuals, that's fat phobic. Just like lumping all black people in one group and saying, I don't like black people is racist. And lumping all disabled people in one group and saying, I don't think people in wheelchairs are hot is ableist. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, I don't. Okay, so, well, okay, so you are allowed to prefer a partner who likes kayaking, which thankfully I think lets us off the hook because something tells me she's not exactly an avid kayaker. But those loopholes aside, it seems that our friend here has stumbled on a rather unique pickup line. P part of me wishes that I had thought of this when I was single. Like, ma'am, you are morally obligated to find me attractive. Now come and date me at once, lest you be guilty of problematic and exclusionary behavior. But something tells me I would have uh, uh, struck out as badly with that line as I'm sure she does. The only difference is that I would have been arrested for harassment and stalking on top of it. Now, uh, a few points to make here. First of all, this woman and my 12 seconds of research tells me that her name is Lexi. Has uh, and the research was just looking at the bottom of the of the video there where it says her name. Has a she has a she has a problem that goes beyond her weight. If Lexi finds that most people don't want to be around her, it probably is because of her god awful personality. I, for one, would rather take a bath in battery acid than be stuck in a room with her for any length of time. And that's got nothing to do with her appearance. It has everything to do with her demeanor, her attitude, tone of voice, and just way of being. This is something that, that anyone who struggles to find a partner should take into consideration. Before wondering whether you're being discriminated against based on your physical features, please reflect on the possibility that you might be a nagging, miserable shrew. Now, it can be hard even for the most attractive person to find or at least maintain relationships if they have a repulsive personality. But if you're not a top-notch physical specimen, and most of us aren't, and you also have the character and general disposition of the Wicked Witch of the West, then you, you really have put yourself in a hole with only yourself to blame for it. Second point, she says that you aren't allowed to exclude entire groups of people from your sexual preference. But that, of course, is exactly what a sexual preference is. That's what any kind of preference is, actually. Preferences exclude by definition. All preferences do. Any preference is exclusionary and discriminatory. That's the whole point. You're preferring one thing over another or one person over another. As for sexual preference specifically, gay men exclude her because she's a woman. Is she going to berate them for that? Well, she might, I guess. As we've seen, for years, the left insisted that sexuality is innate and immutable. It can't be changed, and it's not the result of choice. But more recently, they decided that their own arguments no longer hold. Your sexuality can become problematic if it excludes so-called marginalized groups. A gay man who isn't attracted to a woman who identifies as a man is now a transphobe. A straight man who isn't attracted to a man who identifies as a woman is also a transphobe. Anybody who isn't attracted to an obese person is fat phobic. Anyone who isn't attracted to shrill, hectoring, condescending scolds like Lexi is whatever kind of phobic that applies to. Your sexuality is not your own business. It is not a private matter anymore, as the left had previously insisted. They will decide who you should be attracted to. And quite often, coincidentally enough, the person putting themselves in the position to make this choice for you will decide that you should be attracted to them personally. Funny how that works. You know, it's like, well, I, I've run the numbers and I've done the calculations, and it turns out that in order to not be a bigot, you're supposed to be turned on by, uh, what does it say here? Oh, me. Sorry, I don't make the rules. Well, I guess I do, actually. Third point, briefly, referring back to the first. Um, this seems to be something that a lot of people do, even if they aren't on the left. 
When people have trouble forming and maintaining relationships, both sexual and platonic, they develop a victim complex, deciding that the problem in their personal and romantic lives is that everyone else is being mean to them. And this only exacerbates the problem because nobody wants to be around someone with a victim complex. Even people with victim complexes don't want to be around other people with victim complexes. In fact, people with victim complexes especially don't want to be around other people with victim complexes because then it becomes a zero-sum game, a sort of victimhood competition. The self-determined victim becomes all the more isolated as a result, and their victim mentality only hardens and spreads and metastasizes over time. So if you're looking around and finding that most people don't want to be around you, don't find you appealing or attractive on any level, you could start pointing fingers and making demands, or you can begin the difficult work of changing yourself. And this process should be one that includes both the exterior and the interior, both physical and spiritual. Although this is hard and painful and it requires the kind of honest self-assessment that most people don't have the wherewithal to conduct, the good thing is that you actually have control over yourself. Yourself is a thing you can change by the grace of God. You can't really force anyone else to change. All you can do is scream at them as they back ever farther away until you're all alone yelling into the void. It's up to you which strategy you choose. We know which one Lexi has chosen, and for that reason today, she is, of course, canceled. Listen, hit that subscribe button right now. Do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It is somewhat appreciated.